Good afternoon to you all. It's a pleasure to be able to provide this webinar. My name is uh, Fernando Cornejo, Carnejo. I am the Vice Minister of Governance and Health Surveillance in Ecuador. I have also been working in other activities uh, involved with the science and technology and managing relevant problems for the development of the country. I, was also, uh, I am also a lecturer at the university and I have visited several Latin American countries uh, to lecture on my area of work. In this course, we are going to talk about the Ecuadorian experience in food labeling, not, not only from a technical viewpoint on how the process was um, implemented in Ecuador, but also from a political viewpoint on how, on how is it that a country like Ecuador was able to implement this process of labeling and try to uh, have some influence in the process of qualification in health diplomacy for those who work in international relations on uh, international organizations uh, to support this kind of process. We will try to place the framework of the process with all the, I have no conflict of interest whatsoever. Um, I am uh, referring to food sovereignty, unemployment, health services. All these are the economic conditions within a country, which uh, form the determinant of health, have an important relation with the topic involving um, the three myths uh, on nutrition. First, the nutrition belongs only to children or relates only to children. There is a question exclusively uh, in terms of health and exclusively uh, that it refers to food supplements or programs of food supplementing. These three myths have provoked serious uh, errors and failures within the processes uh, of the traditional programs of nutrition in the country. And including, mm, that is why we have some indicators that are very complex. These determinants of this life cycle indicate that it is not only a question of for children. We don't have to focus the topic only in terms of children. And it is very important to bear in mind that even before the birth and the processes before the birth that imply food supplements, they have influence in, and they are a permanent factor of the condition of the mother, social economical condition of the mothers. And this will um, relate to questions like uh, low weight and then overweight. We also have the indicators that um, we have some concerning indicators because there are a lot of inequalities in our countries, but in our services, especially the private ones, and in those countries that don't have a health network, there is a high use and purchase of dairy products without the need to buy so much dairy products. Also, we have topics related to uh, inadequate diets and that make, that facilitate the appearance of uh, infections, for example. And also associated to uh, the adolescent. We also have the problem involving adolescent pregnancy. A person that is pregnant in her very young years may have problems related to the development of the fetus, uh, 
malnutrition and also a change in the condition of our in our countries is necessary when there is um, we see in our country there is a uh, migration from the interior from the in, uh, hinterland to the cities that means to say that people are not well fit they don't have their meals at home they um, have their meals everywhere that means to say that they generate bad food habits that that is to say we are having a society with uh, overweight so the topic of intervention um, increases risks and we have a society that we have as i said overweight and in and on on top of that we also have malnutrition consequently in the region we have a problem that is related uh, to both ends malnutrition on one side overweight on the other side mm, in 2014 in ecuador eight out of ten deaths were related to the use of alcohol tobacco lack of exercise and inadequate uh, diets so we have um, diabetes uh, cirrhosis high, high pressure and all that consequently it is important for the public policy and health not to evade this Uh, type of problems and face them directly and with decision there are some topics that indicates and ratifies that the double work in malnutrition is a problem of public health there uh, there are important data arising from the 2012 survey many children are very um, the, the, their height is very they are very short this is a problem of malnutrition and on the other on the other side we have obesity so one out of four adolescents have a problem of obesity and overweight associated to a reduction of exercising and this is a world trend of course notwithstanding the policies that we may find Uh, and also we have uh, other weight in adults too so this refers to what we're talking uh, uh, before that we fa we have the two extremes the two poles and the overweight problem is growing so This is a study that we see on the slide in the study in 2017, and we see the case of Ecuador. In Ecuador, the cost of malnutrition is very high. More or less 43 million, 23 million are spent in education. That means to say that this is very heavy for the public budget because this provokes a loss of productivity in the country and also uh, in the educational level. 2.6% of the GNDP is lost in malnutrition in Ecuador. This is an alarming uh, rate because the costs uh, in productivity are exceedingly high due to this. We were having a meeting with experts with uh, um, children that suffered malnutrition. What will happen to his brain when he or her brain when they come to university? What, which part of the brain is complete in order to face university students if they had malnutrition when they were very young? But also we have the total cost of overweight and obesity. With the data that we have, we have an obesity, the costs are higher 
They are higher because the public cost is 1,400 million, the loss of productivity, as I mentioned, everything that is related to disabilities, complications of non-communicable diseases, premature mortality, a lot of money is lost and is spent in all this. That is to say, for this year, data in Ecuador, and the double charge of malnutrition and obesity, we are using more than 4% of GNDP. This is something very serious, very complex. With that 4%, we would have, and we could cooperate and participate in this qualitative jump that Ecuador wishes to give. The loss of productivity and also the, co the cost in education. The question is, in a country that has decided to give a, a jump to the cognitive matter, how can it do it with a high percent of people who, who are born with malnutrition? It is fundamental to address the problem completely and radically because in the first two years of life. This is a very serious problem that needs a strong intervention. Now, how is it? What about the use of food, processed and highly processed food? the purchase of um, beverage containing um, high amounts of sugar is very high. This is absolutely, this can be prevented, but um, no, we, this re demands not only our action, but the joint action um, uh, of the productive policy of the countries, this, the social organizations working in the um, topic of human rights and also the direct commitment of the productive sectors. The productive sector has, we don't say that they don't have the right to um, have profit and gain money. It's their right. However, we have to have a co-responsibility policy with a strong state working directly for the citizens and not, all, and not only providing regulations in order to have direct involvement in this radical change that we require as a region in order to avoid that this type of uh, if, um, data continues to grow. So the uh, soft drinks having lots of sugar, uh, a lot of money is spent on that in the households. 35, according to the latest data that we are, we are continue to refund the data, 44 million dollars. The slide says 35 million, but now it's 44. We are. Which are the strategies for the promotion of health in order to face malnutrition and obesity? In the countries, there, are, there is no political context strong enough in order to be able to make the necessary decisions. And if we don't have that, we won't be able to solve the problem. This uh, doesn't mean that there is no conflict of interest uh, between the public policies, the state, and the companies, uh, the, the food industry. We may say that in Ecuador, through the last years, we have been f have the freedom enough to mm, make the necessary decisions and implement the political measures necessary. The um, Constitution of Ecuador guarantees the right to health and the right to a healthy life. This is the good living in Ecuador. Good living is not only related to general concepts, uh, the, the guarantee of the rights, but also plus the right to be happy. 
the right to be happy means to say that we are in, in good physical condition. The developed plan, the national plan, the good living plan refers to promoting good food habits in order to have full emotional and intellectual health. The government has had the possibility to provide the state with the institutions that allow them to make the necessary measures and decorporativize. And this is important in our countries. Well, I am not only speaking to doctors, nutritionists, but to people that work in the international relations, in the political relationship within states, in a corporative state in which we find that the industry, the unions, producers, associations have direct involvement in the decision-making processes, basically we will find that the public policies that um, seek the guarantee of the right is failing. The example of Ecuador is very clear in this, how we have to decorporativize in order to make independent decisions. There is a research institute which has direct relations with the nutrition topics in Ecuador the National Institute of Agriculture and uh, Studies has a panel in which the state was a minority, being an institute that was um, supported by the state. But the associations uh, had uh, were greatly involved. The farmers were also involved, and consequently, we must emphasize that the process of reform of the state has to produce absolute freedom to be able to make decisions based in the interests of our citizens and not of the large industries. This is one of the policies that we directly uh, have, or the action that we have, in, for example, um, implying food labeling that we'll refer to later, um, exercising. But many times that type of topics, if we don't make specific and we don't take specific measures, may only, only be a declaration. We need more. We don't want to be specters. The specific measures to be made are those that, in fact, have impact on the population. And it's important in Ecuador was to promote exercising among students of primary and secondary education at least one hour a day during the five days of the week. There is an important date, promotion of uh, breastfeeding, uh, healthy food in schools, but this is not only to put it on the curricula. Ecuador has carried out strict control in schools. That is why mm, ultra-processed products are not sold. Regulation of advertising, this is also an important topic. We still have to do more. Unionist policies, uh, tax policies, and also taxing nocive products. We have been very uh, strong in that question of taxing uh, highly uh, sugar-containing beverages also tobacco, alcohol. It is important to work on this topic of tax, taxes as we see. All, we also tax very heavily the food that has high quantities of fat. And we have to use the power of the public 
market, which is one of the great purchasers, investing, I mean to say, uh, public procurement is important in order to regulate all these topics. Of course, these um, taxing policies are criticized by the industry, obviously. Uh, when we say that we have this tax, or please uh, release this tax, we say that it is a topic of taxes because they say that the taxes are used just to because they, uh, the country is bankrupt. But this has an impact, a substantial uh, impact on the public health of the citizens. We also work with the municipalities, decentralized governments, districts in the area of health. It's a complete topic in the area of the municipalities or districts in Ecuador. We have territorial development, and we have the question in questions, very serious question in, in questions, road, green areas, drinking water. That means to say that the authorities have to have a follow-up work with the municipalities in order to make adequate planification of kinds, universal coverage in health is very important. Health intervenes in the processes of malnutrition, but the first aid processes, processes um, are also important, nutritional responsibility, and so on. What is it that happens in the case of the labeling of processed food? What have we carried out during all this time? The Ministry of Public Health, together with other entities, made a call to different social players in order to propose uh, the graphic labeling of processed food. At the same time, uh, this process, technical process, multi-sectoral process with the involvement of people from the economy, um, solidarity institutions, private sectors, different social players, the academy, in order for them to understand the process and, the, and to see the different proposals that existed. So we used a label which was like a semaphore, a traffic light, hmm? with the three with the three colors, red, yellow, and green. So you will see on the you will see on the graph there are three categories related to the quantity of sugar, fat, and salt. The red color is understood as a warning. The yellow one, be careful, and the green one, that means to say that this is uh, uh, there is no, no, no danger in using that food. And the values recommended, and which are the values that specifically the product contains. The first version of the regulation, and in in 2014, we approved uh, an amendment. The question that you will make is, how did we do it? How is it that a small country, um, having a very complicated political past, was able with several players that didn't want to, that we didn't want to frighten uh, uh, foreign investment, how is it that the public sector was able to achieve this? Because everybody asks these questions. Also, countries from Europe, it is important to say that with political de with political decisions we need decision from the we need a decision from the Ecuadorian state to do it and with the political support of the different players in these topics 
that are fundamental for the public health processes in our country. We, the authorities, as health authorities, and the different social groups that participate in the process of public policies, if we don't make free decisions, basically, we will never be able to achieve this. And how did we do it? Making the decision, notwithstanding the radical and opposition and being able to face the processes technically. The current regulation establishes a technical topic uh, with the concentrations allowed regarding uh, sugar, salt, and fat according to the international standards. In addition, the warnings and messages, this product contains this and that, transgenic, and all that. For example, in the case of transgenic too, and also the um, percentage of natural food added in that. We are working, still working. We are working on new proposals in order to improve the quality of this labeling process. This is a dynamic work and continuing with the case study, the studies, the idea was having a legal basis and negotiate. we had a process of negotiations with the producers, the involvement with the executive and working with the different chambers, associations and industries. Many people of the, from the industry visited us, they are always welcome and probably there are topics in which we will never come into agreement, but our interest was to safeguard the health of the population. The topic is how we do it. We have to arrive to consensus without waiving fundamental topics. This is our purpose. We are not going to, we will never abandon consensus, but we will maintain our position regarding the value of the food. I know that I'm talking to health diplomats, people that work in international relations. We will find also important companies that they are uh, international companies. It is very clear that many international companies have a very strong political lobby at the national level and also at the international level, of course. That is why we require um, qualified people in the area of health to be able to uh, support the positions of the countries during all these processes, um, having dialogue, dialogue with the embassies of the countries to be able to have a firm position uh, in order to resolve the conflicts within the norms of the countries. We cannot have warm look diplomats. We have to generate conviction and decisions must be made regarding the benefit of the population. This is also implies the search for international support. We are certain that if the international uh, organizations um, would uh, ha would have failed in recognizing our efforts, it would be very difficult for us. We thank the support of the WHO of UNASUR that recognized and legitimized the Ecuadorian process. This was very important for us. And for that reason, our representatives in the international relations offices have to have the necessary solvency to go to all these meetings and present to the organizations the measures that we are making, that we are taking. On the contrary, it is going to be very difficult for the domestic authorities to carry out our work. 
the non-harmonization or legislation, harmonization is also a very important topic. Uh, because we may have uh, some regulation, they may have, on the other hand, uh, some uh, piece of legislation. Everything has to be harmonized. The strategy is try to seek um, harmonization of the legislations and of the norms because many times international companies may use the lack of harmonizations against us, against the country. Many processes uh, are similar in other countries or in others is for the first time. This also implies to us authorities we don't have to be afraid of committing mistakes. Our President Correa said we may commit mistakes but I prefer to break one dish and not, not to break anybody, because that would indicate that we are not working hard on a project. We also had to perfect our public policies. The implementation is very complex, we, but we have to do it. Once we have the policy which is defined, we will never stop, notwithstanding the problems. <coughs> many times it was said that we, there were many things that uh, the companies were requesting. It is fundamental to say that it is important to say that we cannot stop the processes once they are started. There are technical processes that were very well done, but the, when the application of the process comes, we don't have to stop them. Well, we use this semaphore this light to facilitate a application of the norm. We were able to have the commitment of the industries, and we were able to establish the change of habit in the population, especially in the uh, smallest one. We were able, the people have to change also the content of the product, the companies, because the social pressure and the legitimation of the processes was strong enough to make safer products. The next step was the implementation. We need to get to the population with a single language, simple language, in order to have consensus so that the population may understand that is why the semaphore, the three colors, were well accepted by consumers. We found that when there is a person that doesn't have the information, the people who used to buy the product that had the uh, information, even the uh, soft drink have changed their formulas. They are content, safer beverages, because the population was aware what they wanted. For example, too much sugar, they rejected that. For example, a, a very soft drink, which is an orange drink, which was the sweetest of all, they, mm, contained more sugar, and the children preferred it. But they changed the formula, and now they have less sugar. This implies it is important to make all these changes. 
the private companies anyways have the legitimate right to profit but in ecuador no company no private company has lost money with the labeling that means to say that in these products even if they are changed they are also profitable um, for example you that make social relations my co this company will leave the country well they want to frighten us saying that no company left Ecuador. The companies continue to work in Ecuador. They haven't gone bankrupt. The work of small and medium-sized enterprise has favored solidarity economy in the country, creating more production in our country. And this is very important for our diplomats. We are not going to believe everything that the industry says. And we have been able to overcome long decades. If I regulate international companies, I have to do it with better conditions for the populations. And then we have the challenge of sustainability. We are very open to the proposals. Ecuador has a process uh, to change the productive matrix. It is important to address the topic technically as with the solvency and also be able to listen because within the process we may have topics that are not uh, perfectly uh, that, 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 that there are some uh, problems or some errors. We have been able to correct the errors too. So as long as the norm, we may find the different specific, uh, the specificities. Civil society in all this has a fundamental role as well as international organizations. These uh, members of the diplomatics in health have to guarantee the support to these processes in order to have good results. Thanks to this, you have been able to achieve this in our public health during these 10 years. Well, what about the qualitative evaluation was reproduced by the participants in focal groups and also we learned it since we were very small. The text of the uh, information on the products has an adequate size and we have to see that children from 10 to 14 years, years of age, when they change their habits, when they are smaller, we have more possibility to have a sustainable change throughout time and the possibility for these people having less health complications and problems. This is a high impact achievement. The same applies to university students and to mothers. So there are three large populations that have the possibility to get involved in the process. And also there are some adaptation strategies. People drink more water, they have less sugar in their meals, they prefer uh, they avoid the use of uh, fat. Mm, also, we have to work on several topics. All the changes that we have identified provoke a better style of life, lifetime. We see some of the international agree uh, 
agreements we have received, some of the letters that we received from organizations that supported our work. These letters were received by the international departments in our country, implying that the work, the strategic work, is fundamental in any public policy. If we make isolated measures in the world, this could be questions by the international community if there is no knowledge of the context in which these measures are made. This is the fundamental role of the departments of international relations. I insist the most crit crucial moment of the labeling but was part important of the sustainability. We have been working in some important events with Chile, Ecuador, and Bolivia. Also, the PAHO provided great support. The director of the PAHO pro uh, had very important word in speaking about the good results of the system in order to fight obesity and the need to have an articulated and joint work taking actions for the countries against obesity and be able to revert the problem of obesity. Another topic is important. Here you see Cartas de Apoyo, the support letters. We must strengthen multilateral work. When, we, when I attend the different international events, which I attend very frequently, uh, events in science and technology, and we were talking about the colleagues. There are different multilateral organizations in the America, and they have the same agenda, and the application doesn't reach 10%. The work in the convergence of multilateral institutions, OAS, CELAC, UNASUR, Andean Community, Mercosur, CARICOM, and so on. The convergence in order to have a follow-up work on the different decisions made, uh, the decision of high authorities in these international organizations and multilateral organizations. On the contrary, we run the risk of seeing the processes abandoned. Consequently, it is very important to articulate conditions. We have to thank here the work of the regarding the topic of labeling, the ability of multilateral organizations to defend public uh, health processes. On the contrary, we r run serious risks. Simply to conclude, say that what is the benefit of labeling, which we have defended? the right of the consumers to have clear information, true information. This is the right to having adequate information. The, the national plans are recognized at the national level, and they have a simple format, as we said before. The industry has produced more healthier products. So, and we have new products favoring the process of selective substitution of imports. Ecuador became a pioneer and strengthened the domestic market. Also in Bolivia, Chile in 2016, they also implemented this policy with some variations especially related to their national processes, guaranteeing a successful replication of the process. And we are working with other countries, um, for example, Bolivia, Brazil, 
Also, they have asked uh, about the topic of working together in this Colombia, Mexico, in that area of surveillance. So we have this possibility of joint work. Small country like Ecuador, a country that um, during 10 years of citizen revolution uh, had to undergo very serious times. Some specific thoughts about the regulations, opposition, pressures by the industry, pressure from political sectors. I was uh, once ha having lunch and she said that at the National Assembly some of the members of the opposition said what happens is that labeling affects some of our supporters. Yes, we affect any process that in turn is damaging to the public health of the Ecuadorians. Our commitment is work with the great majorities in the country. So market studies, sometimes we work with the industry in order to promote direct products. The behavior of the basket in Ecuador shows that there has been no problem. It is important to say that just one measure is not enough. We have to work on the policies of states and if they are working in international context, the better. Why? Because basically they have more legitimacy and ability to be sustained. For example, if we have a do, uh, dollar uh, country that has no monetary sovereignty, we'll have um, smuggling in the borders. On the other countries may have the advantage to devaluate their currency. So we had a lot of unlabeled products coming from the borders. Therefore, the measures have to be integrated. And if they are multilateral, the better, as I said before. An intersectorial, participative approach, not only of the health authorities, but also the economy and finance and the productive sectors. We have to monitor the regulatory measures with the involvement of all the civil society players with tax measures and responsible work. There is a responsibility in the industry which also has guaranteed the compliance of this program. This is the last uh, slide. I would also like to thank the visits that we have received and the commitment of the ISACs and UNASERS. We have to disseminate this, and not only the question of Ecuador, but the agreeable experiences that we have in the region. We have had many meetings in Ecuador on integrated policies with the involvement of our ISACs on Azur, uh, regional f uh, meetings in Brazil, Ecuador, and the challenge is to work for multilateralism in order to have a direct involvement in public policies. The role of ISACs, UNASUR, the Health Council of UNASUR, and the community, Andean community of nations, is to generate them as the producer of policies, generating consensus in the nations. We have, think, we have been able to achieve important things.
the agenda uh, for the Americas 2030, in which we will have uh, taken into consideration the goals of the millennials. Uh, we have the goals for the region in order to have similar goals and indicators as a region. We have to work in several areas also. We also have to work with uh, different knowledge generators, decision makers, in order to implement uh, and to um, be successful in these challenges. Decision makers are the nexus to be able to comply with those processes. From the technical viewpoint, the message is international relations. We have to have technically prepared in order to support the decision that our authorities make and be able to change the policies in order to fight for the maintenance, in order to have uh, adequate process of medicaments, joint purchase, and other topics that we have on the agenda in the region. Thank you very much. I hope I was not very tiresome or boring, uh, but it was interesting to mention this process of Ecuador in order so that this process may leave some results and thoughts uh, to you. Thank you very much again, and it's a pleasure always to be with you.